Hey guys, uh, CJ9899 here, and I bring you Mini Panels 101 Part 3. Okay, so for Part 3 of this series, I have what you can obviously see here is a Simplex 4004. Now, as you can tell, this is my first Simplex panel that I own. And if you're wondering uh, why it's mounted like this, that is because I actually don't have a uh, cabinet for it. I bought this um, with, it had the chassis, main CPU, an extra relay card, a CC DAC card, and the transformer with everything. So it still works, it's just I don't have a cabinet, but it is mounted on two 2x4s two and that works just as fine. So this panel, out of um, all three mini panels that I've done, this is obviously the best one. Um, part 1 I did the Notifier CSGL2000, part 2 I did the Miracom FA101T, this part, this is going to be the most advanced out of the three. And uh, I do recall, if you may go back and you watch part 2, I did say that I was getting a uh, another panel for this series without a cabinet. So, anyways, enough talking, let's move on. So, for this, this panel has a uh, two zones and two knacks out of the box. Um, or as in it's standard, it is two zones and two knacks. That is what this one is. You have um, zone one and two, and you have knacks one and two over here. And right now I have just zone one and knack one being used for the devices. So uh, let me just come over here for a second. Um, so right here, I'm not gonna zoom in the camera because it's positioned a little weirdly, but um, I will try to point this out the best. Here you have your um, AC power in terminals. This is for the orange, gray and yellow from the transformer here. Down here I just have a little terminal block that I took out of my fire shield to use uh, for the 120 volt AC power. Um, right here you have your battery terminals. Now I this to, leads me to believe the only reason this panel is taken out of service because this um, black piece of plastic for the negative terminal is broken off. So that's probably the only reason it was taken out. It actually looks like it melted a bit but um, I was able to do the battery hack on this panel though and it works perfectly fine. Um, here you have your 24 volts, um, power terminal and your aux zero volt power. You have your, um, one relay for your, uh, I think this panel has one relay, uh, standard. And then you have your, um, four wire smoke detector and low power terminals. Now, th now, the zone terminals are actually kind of interesting because, uh, here you have zone one and zone two, but there's, the, each zone has three terminals. Um, labeled aux, um, RET, I can't, I don't know what that stands for, and zone power. Basically how this works is that each zone, both zones 1 and 2, share the negative terminal. I'm not really sure why they did that, it may just been for easier, like to keep costs low, but uh, I have no idea. Here you have two um, reset, or two dip switches to disable these zones. Um, and it's weird because and one thing I will say that I don't like about this panel, and a lot of people have this issue, is that this panel has a very, very faulty dip switches, or they're not, they aren't, they were pretty cheaply made. So over time, they will actually start to come loose, and if you turn it on, sometimes the, you have to like hold it in order for it to uh, register properly uh, for the function it's set to do. And down here, you have three more terminals. This one is for programming. I will go into programming later. Um, you have your walk test. And you have your um, alarm out, your alarm outputs disconnect. So this will dis disconnect things like the alarm relays and the NATs. So finally, here we have a uh, um, an extra relay card, and this has an extra trouble relay, supervisory relay, and alarm relay um, that came with the panel. Um, I don't know. I may plan on getting an extra zone card because you this panel can be expanded up to eight zones. But um, it is two right now, and as I say, a panel that has five or less zones is considered to be a mini panel to me. But uh, yeah, I, you can get some cards with two extra zones or four. Um, but you can. Weird thing is that to put it to eight, you can only use a double. You can only use a four zone and then another two zone card. You can't do like um, um, what is it? You can't do uh, like three um, two zone cards. It won't work for some reason. So. I have said enough, now I'm going to power on the panel. So, here we go. Okay, so now the panel is on and you see you have the AC power light LED is on. 
So, um, first I will actually give a demonstration of this thing in Alarm, and then I will show some of its other features. So, let us, for over here we have a, uh, um, my, uh, bilingual, uh, 2099 T-Bar, and up here we have my Wheelock NS set on code 3, uh, low volume. So, here we go. Um, if you can see, it does say, I may actually bring the camera up here now. It says zone one for uh, alarms. So let's go ahead and reset the pole. I, just, I don't have my keys on me, but I do have a spare. I do have a spare key. And a nice thing about this panel is, it has uh, it has re-alarm. So you can, re you can re alarm a zone and it'll go back into alarm. Uh, that's kind of cool. And then you click reset. And then it takes about, I believe it's 10 to 15 seconds to reset. We'll just wait for that. Yes, so now, um, bear with me, I'm going to go get a manual because I still don't really remember all the programming options. And we'll go into a little bit of programming and walk test, so bear with me. So first off, to put the panel into programming mode, we have to set um, SW3 to the on position. Alright, and you press ACK. And then that brings up the options here. So, the first one here is for um, number of zones. First option here, this is just um, to program how many number of zones you want, so you can like change it. If I had a number of zones... Um, obviously I don't, I only have two because I don't have any extra cards, so we can keep going. Uh, next option is for, uh, to determine which zone is programmed as what. So it can be programmed as either fire monitor, alarm verification, fire supervisory, trouble, or a style C contact zone. But since I don't need any of that, let's move on. Uh, we can keep going. Nine. This is for your city or CC DACT card. I have one here, but I don't have a pin connector to connect it to the main board. So, uh, and plus it would show a trouble anyways, so we can move on. Um, a is for signal silence inhibit. So what that does is it gives a certain amount of time before the panel can be silenced. So if you want it for one minute, that means after an alarm has been activated, you have to wait at least a minute before you can silence the uh, system. But uh, I don't need any of that. Um, C is for uh, alarm silence cutoff. Uh, that programs it to automatically silence after a certain amount of time. Your options are 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes, and that would be um, described through one, two, three. Um, next, you have your coding options, which this panel actually has quite a few coding options. It has, uh, you have co continuous, temporal, um, 20 beats per mar minute march time, 120 beats per minute march time, or simple coding, or is it's called zone coding. But I have it set on continuous just because the, the NS codes itself. Um, F is for your enunciator interface cards. So this would be if I had an enunciator, but since I don't have an enunciator, I yeah, gotta leave that at zero. And uh, H is for your trouble supervisory reminder stuff. Um, it's, I don't really get what it's supposed to be for, but it's just zero or one. And yeah, that brings us to the end of code, to, uh, programming. So, now we can switch the dip switch back to the off. And now, this, uh, we can, uh, demonstrate walk test. Now, walk test is gonna be kinda weird because, uh, I don't have a coded, or a, I don't have a notification appliance that can actually, like, does that the panel can code so it's just gonna you'll hear the relay click but uh, I'll still demonstrate it but that's pretty much it so switch number four is for walk test and uh, that would be H I don't really get why it would be H but uh could have been a T or something like that but uh I will demonstrate at least zone one so you'll hear the relay click once that's for zone one that's the only thing I don't like, is that it'll start beeping. I guess I can cross the la the uh, terminal here and give a demonstration of the second zone. That's, uh, see the strobe did flash, but that's it. 
So yeah, that's a walk test for the 4004, so we can take that off. And um, finally, let's give a demonstration of uh, disabling all the alarmed outputs. This is going to beep like crazy in a second. This is going to put all of that in trouble. All that. All your one, all your different alarm outputs. And uh, so if you see if I were to pull it, it would show the alarm, but it wouldn't uh, set anything off. So, uh, let's go ahead and disable, actually no, I actually, I learned this out, you want to uh, reset it before you re-enable it or else it will set the alarm off. So, uh, yep, just give it about 10 seconds. And uh, then we can switch it back off. There. So now the system is back to normal. As you can see, we have also have the battery hack from uh, the positive terminal of the battery terminals to the 24 volts terminal. So that has been uh, your demonstration of the 4004. That is basically all you need to know. Um, I do plan to use this panel quite a bit in the future, so stay tuned for that. Uh, this is CJ9899 signing off, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.